This week has been a numbers week. Why? Monday we had the PPI. Then yesterday, Mr. Powell, Jerome Powell, spoke about the perspective of inflation and everybody in the markets are expecting an interest rate decrease. And today, finally, the labor statistic released the CPI numbers. But should we be worried or not about the numbers? I will explain to you in three simple steps why the CPI numbers, in my opinion, are not really precise. Actually, at the opposite, we should worry about inflation. But let's see the different aspects that are around inflation and the CPI computation. The first one in this graph, you will see how the inflation cooled a little bit in April, but just a little bit. But why inflation numbers are not so accurate, in my opinion, and especially the CPI number, for three reasons. The first reason, inflation, how it is calculated right now, it takes into account only consumer products. It doesn't take into account, for example, investment products, like the most important investments asset of all family, the house where they live. This number, it has been su substituted by a number that represents the rent of the house, which it is not exactly accurate because Houses prices have increased much more than the rent price and the substitute that is used by labor and statistic. Second reason, and to understand the second reason, please look at this graph. In this graph, I put in comparison the GDP from the 80 to 2023 with the monetary aggregate that is known as M3. As you can see, they proceed in a similar way up to the financial crisis of 2007-2010. Since this time, known as the subprime crisis, the quantity of money in the market started to skyrocket. So you can see that the amount of money in circulation increased much more in comparison, at the opposite, of the GDP. So what does it mean? It means simply that you have more money in circulation. But what happened with more money in circulation? Here we come to the point. The point is that inflation is, and the value of the money, is it depends on the demand and on the supply of the money, in that, in that case, dollars. But if you would live maybe in Europe with the euro or in England, in UK with the British pound, situation is pretty similar because all the currency and all experienced the same expansion of their supply, like the one you see in this graph. So if you make the same graph with the euro or if you make the same graph maybe with the British pound, you will have similar results. So there is more money in circulation, which means that in reality, this money is translated into inflation. But the inflation, you don't see that number on the CPI numbers. Why? Well, first, because they don't take in, into account investment product, like it could be the houses, but they don't take into account financial products. Like, for example, in this graph, you will have the opportunity to see how the quotation of the SP500 have been increased from the 80s to nowadays. You can see that also in this case, it experienced an exponential increase like the money supply. So the money supply translates the more quantity produced into an increase of real asset that could be stock prices or it could be the houses prices. So it comes to the third point that we have to take in consideration. How CPI are computed? Well, the CPI during the 80s uh, have been, the way they were computed, have been changed in a new way. The new way CPI are computed, they take out the value of the houses, as we have seen, but at the same time, if a product increases its price too much, the, the calculation take into account this also. And maybe it starts with the reasoning. C customers, instead of buying this product that have increased that much, they switch to another product. So here we have the concept of substitution, which in my opinion is wrong. Why? I will explain to you why. Inflation should reflect your power, your buying power. If you are used, for example, to eat Swiss cheese, if Swiss cheese increase its price too much, why you have to, to switch maybe to a lower quality cheese? That doesn't make any sense, but it is the way inflation is produced. So the three reasons are, first one, Inflation doesn't take into account investment products. It's just referred to consumer products. Second, 
the money supply have been skyrocketing since the subprime crisis between 2007 and 2010. And third, the way inflation is computed itself, which brings some manipulation of the numbers. For these three reasons, number, numbers that I've shown uh, are not reflecting exactly the reality. But how can you say that it doesn't reflect the reality? Well, it's very easy. During the 80s or during the 70s, every family could afford to buy an house. Nowadays, houses prices have skyrocketed and houses, especially in urban centers, in big cities, are out of reach for most of the middle class. This is an easy explanation in how money have lost value in comparison with real goods. So, it would be advisable to have an indicator that takes into account not only consumer price, but also investment vehicles like the SP500 quotation or houses prices, because it's important to preserve the middle class purchasing power that have been reduced through time up to now that families, they cannot afford any more an house.